everyone, Mary here, and this video we're going to talk a little bit about converting units. Um, in physics class, we're going to convert units every single day. Miles to hour to kilometers, light years to miles, minutes, seconds. We're going to do this on a daily basis. You're going to see this in labs. You're going to see this in homework. This is a skill you must be good at, not just kind of good at, really good at. So we're going to spend a little time going through a whole bunch of variety of problems um, and hopefully that plus your homework you're going to get pretty good at this stuff. Here's a example that science teachers all over the world use because boy howdy is it a good example. November 1999 there was a NASA had launched a Mars climate orbiter that was supposed to go into orbit around Mars of course and um, it crashed and it burned up in the upper atmosphere of Mars. Upon an analyzing what happened later, they found that two different groups of engineers worked on this. One set of engineers calculated the thrust in pounds. Another set of engineers calculated it in newtons. Both of these are units of force and they're both commonly used. One, there was no place in the computer program that made them the same unit. Um, the whole kind of boo-boo cost over $327 million. And honestly, is kind of gleeful for every science teacher on the planet because we are constantly talking to students about units, 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 and you have to be truthful and you've got to keep them the same when you go through a problem. So units are a big deal in every area of science. I encounter some students who say this, hey I don't have to worry about converting units because I know how to work Google and Google can do this. I can do this all online. Well yeah, but let's talk about a couple situations. One, what happens when the problem is more complicated than Google can answer? And two, has the internet ever failed you? Have you ever been someplace where there is no internet reception? Um, you're out in the woods, you're in a basement, yeah. So you have to be able to do this on your own. And if you want a job as a professional in a field that requires that you know how to do this, you can't totally depend on Google. This is the way I'm going to show you how to convert anything to anything else. And these are the steps I like to use when I have students convert units. One, you got to find a conversion factor. Two, you draw a TIE fighter. Do, 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 TIE fighter. And then you put the numbers and the units into the TIE fighter so that the correct units cancel. Let me give you an example. I want to convert 17.5 feet into inches. Now I know, I know, I know, put down your calculator. I know some of you can just do this in your head, but I want to use a simple example so that you see the technique. So here's how this works. A lot of students have told me they like doing this on lined paper. So if I've got 17.5 feet and I want to go to inches, first thing is I find a conversion factor and I know that 12 inches equals one foot. Then I draw a TIE fighter. Now you can call it a fraction if you want. I just think TIE fighter is a lot cooler and sexier than fraction. I want to get rid of feet and then keep inches on the top. Always put the unit you want to get rid of kitty corner from itself. So if I've got units on the top and I want to get rid of them, put it on the bottom. I want to keep inches on the top, so I'm going to put inches on the top. After you have the units in, then you get to put the numbers in. 12 inches is 1 foot. And I like to, before I pick up my calculator, cross out feet with feet, meaning the only thing I'm going to have left is inches. Then I pick up, pick up my calculator. 17.5 times 12 gives me 210 inches. This is an exact number. It does not affect significant digits. This I have three, so I have three significant digits. All right, let's try another one. 175 pounds into kilograms, pounds to kilograms. First thing I've got to do is find a conversion factor. So my conversion factor is there are 0.22 pounds 
equals one kilogram. 0.22 pounds equals one kilogram. And I'm just going to look that up because my brain said, Mary, are you sure? And I think I'm pretty sure. Oh, point, oh it's 2.2 pounds. There you go. I knew I was feeling insecure about that. 2.2 pounds in one kilogram. So I want to get rid of pounds, keep kilograms. There's 2.2 pounds in one kilogram. This cancels, and if it's on the bottom, you divide. So 175 divided by 2.2, and I end up with 79.545 kilograms. I've got three significant digits, and this is going to be 79 point. This is going to round to 5, not to 4, and that's kilograms. Okay? All right. We're going to try a couple others. What if you have a multiple step conversion, multi-step conversion, meaning you don't need one TIE fighter, you need many. Here's an example. How many seconds are there in one hour? Now, you might be a super nerd and know how many seconds are in an hour, but most people don't know that. So I have um, one hour. Remember, I like doing this on lined paper. I want to end up with seconds on top. So what do I know? I know that one hour contains 60 minutes. I want to put hours so I can get rid of them. So hours are on top. To get rid of it, you put it down on the bottom. I want to keep minutes on top. After you put the units in, then you can put the numbers in. 60 minutes, one hour. Hours are going to cancel, and I'm not done. But I now have this converted into minutes. Now I want to get rid of minutes and go to seconds. How many seconds in a minute? 60. 60 seconds in one minute. I then like to circle what I have left and double check. I've crossed out everything else and go, I want seconds. I've got seconds. Then I pick up my calculator. 60 times 60, 3,600 seconds. What, do I worry about significant figures here? I do not. Why? Because this is an exact conversion. This is an exact conversion conversion. So I don't have to worry about them. Those are all significant. Those are counting numbers. They're exactly that many seconds in an hour. How many centimeters are there in 13.8 miles? Okay, hit pause, try it, then we'll come back and do it together. All right, guys, here we go. I've got 13.8 miles I want to convert that into centimeters. Now, that's kind of silly. Not very often you're going to convert miles into centimeters, but just humor me on this one. Okay. Now, I can go miles to meters to centimeters. I can go miles to feet to inches to centimeters. You have to kind of plot a path. What, what trail are you going to follow. I'm going to follow this path right here. So I want to get rid of miles and go to meters. I know there are 1609 meters in a mile. That's going to cancel. That gives me meters. I am going to get rid of meters and then put in centimeters. Always put the units in first, numbers in second. 100 centimeters and one meter. I cross things out as I go, and then I'm going to go, oh, I'm there. I'm at centimeters. I wanted centimeters. So now I pick up my calculator, 13.8 times 1609 times 100, and I'm going to end up with a big number, uh, 22204.20, and that's going to be 2.22 million um, centimeters. Cool. All right, that will end this one, and next up is going to be converting part two, where we're going to do top and bottom conversions and squares and cubes.